Okay, the upper half of an ellipse is revolved around the x-axis to create an ellipsoid. And I need to get an equation for that upper half. And so I'm going to have to solve this for y and just keep the positive root. So a little bit of scratch work before we start really doing anything else. Subtract the x term, multiply by 4, and square root. So I have y squared 4 times the quantity 1 minus x squared over 9. Take the square root, and I'm only keeping the positive root because I want the upper half. And I'll go ahead and leave the 4 out in front. So that's a 2 square root 1 minus x squared over 9. So that's the curve. All right, the reason that was important is because if this is a lo uh, x value here, look, a horizontal location x, then the radius of that ribbon is going to be given by 2 root 1 minus x squared over 9. All right, now I, I add the fact that this little chunk of arc right here, ds, is given by 1 plus the square of y prime dx. And I'm going to have to work out y prime so that I can write that down. So the idea is that I'm going to cut and unroll this ribbon. And when I do that, the length of the strip will be equal to the circumference of this. And the width of it will be equal to this little ds. So let's work on the ds. Um, why don't I just go ahead and say, since my room is limited here, um, why don't I just say, let's get the derivative of y, because that's going to be enough work by itself. Um, so I have this function of x raised to the 1 half, so I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So I bring down the 1 half. I get this function of x to the negative 1 half. And then I multiply by the derivative of the interior, which is going to be negative 2x over 9. And the 2s are going to cancel out there. And I end up with a negative 2x over 9. And then I'm going to move this piece into the denominator. Negative 1 half power means 1 over the square root. So 1 minus x squared over 9. All right, so then y prime squared, I may as well write that separately. y prime squared is going to be 4x squared over 81 times the quantity 1 minus x squared over 9. All right, that's just my little uh, ds, or the, the in, part of the inside of the little ds piece. So... I suppose I could write ds here. It's going to be square root 1 plus that thing I just calculated. So 4x squared over 81 times times 1 minus x squared over 9 dx. All right, so let's visualize the unrolled um, arc or surface area element. And I'm, I've kind of like put myself in a jam here because I made the picture too big, but I'm going to unroll this thing up here. So there's a little bit of space at least. And the length of that is equal to the circumference of this ribbon in the picture. So that's going to be a 2 pi times 2 root. 1 minus x squared over 9. And then the thickness of it is ds, which I've just computed down here. So I'm finally ready to set up an integral. And then thankfully, I don't have to actually grind through it symbolically. I'm just using a computer algebra system today. So I have, if I call this a little da for the area, the total area is the sum of all the contributions to area. And that's going to be the integral of 4 pi, I just combined the 2's up there, 4 pi root 1 minus x squared over 9 times ds, which is all of this stuff, square root 
1 plus 4x squared over 81 times the quantity 1 minus x squared over 9 dx. And then I need to add all those up as x goes from negative 3 to 3. And I'll just bounce to maxima to get an approximation on this. Okay, maxima didn't like this the way it, it was written. And I was being lazy about simplifying. So let's see if we can simplify this. So I'm going to distribute that, that 1 minus x squared over 9 into this radical. So that gives me the a is uh, the integral of negative 3 to 3, 4 pi square root 1 minus x squared over 9. And then when I distribute that to this term, it cancels a 1 minus x squared over 9. So I end up with a plus... 4x squared over 81 dx. And I'm out of space here, so I'm not going to do any more simplifying. I'm just going to hope that maxima will take it. OK, the integral is set up in maxima. Um, you can see I didn't even simplify these like terms in the square root. Um, really, I was just being lazy because I was running out of space. And if I integrate this thing, I end up with that expression. So quite complex, but at least I got something exact. And if you ever want an approximation on the previous answer, just go float percent, and I get 67.7 area units. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into the slide.